Audio compression on dialogue is key for creating professional sounding mixes on post-production projects. In this video, I'll show you how to set the optimal settings for dialogue compression on your dialogue tracks. So when people use audio compression in music, they're often using it more as an effect or a way to really change or reshape a sound like a kick drum or a snare or even an instrument or a vocal track. In audio post, we generally use dialogue compression a bit differently. We really just want it to smooth out the peaks in volume and create a more even sounding dialogue track. All right, let's get on the computer and I'll show you some settings. Okay, so I decided to use the R compressor or Renaissance compressor by Waves today just to demonstrate. For no other reason than it's just very simple and has very simple controls. Really doesn't matter that much, I think. You know, what, whatever compressor you have, the, the Pro Tools compressor, Renaissance, uh, Fab Filter is one of my favorites. But uh, this one is just so simple to demonstrate with, I thought we'd, uh, we'd do it with this one. I decided not to feed audio directly to the video today for this. It's not really important that you hear the effect of, of the compression, it's so subtle. And I just happen to pull up a session that I'm working on, but you'll see how it works with the metering. I've just muted the audio and not sent it to the camera. So ratio, threshold, attack, release, and gain. Those are your main settings for most any compressor. For dialogue, I really like to use a minus four to one as the compressor setting for the ratio minus that's close enough 4.02 and then we got to get the threshold pulled down if we're going to get any uh, compression at all so let's pull that down we can start with it around minus 10 and let's play some audio here and just see if we're getting some compression so we are so again around this uh, amount is good I like to see it bouncing to about minus three. This happens to be a voiceover track, so it's pretty consistent. If it were more uneven audio, it might go as low as minus six, but I'd like the range to kind of go from about zero to minus six. So that seems right for ratio and threshold. Now, attack and release are important as well. Again, if it's a musical kind of thing, you might do something different. You might want a slower attack, a long release, but for dialogue, we really want the compressor to kick in right away when it hears loud volume. So we can go with a totally fast attack and we can go with a relatively fast release. I don't want it to bounce too quickly back up. Uh, so we'll go just a little bit off of uh, a super quick release. So just a little bit, 10, 20% over from the fastest setting I think will be fine. Now let me play the audio again, and again you can see that it's hitting around maybe a little stronger now. So let's back this off. Again, I'd like it to be averaging about minus three. So that looks good, and that will just smooth out your dialogue, keep the loud stuff from being too peaky, and just create a nice even track. If you're doing a narrative film, so if you're doing a film that's scripted and it's got high drama, action, people are shouting, um, or getting very quiet, you know, how is that gonna affect the compression? I don't generally worry about it if people are getting quiet, then you don't really need extra compression for that. Uh, if people are getting really loud, the actual problem is I want to hear them get louder. If it's a narrative film, and again, somebody's all of a sudden starting to yell, I want to feel the volume of that yelling. I don't want it to be compressed too much. So if, you, if you're doing a narrative project and you have loud audio, you actually may need to back off on the threshold. So move the threshold back up in order to not be crushing the louder dialogue. So you kind of have to trust your ears in the end. For a documentary or for regular VO, you can pretty much set it and forget it. But if it's a narrative film project and you have real loud stuff, you may want to back it off in order so that that dialogue can really be dynamic. In the end, you just have to trust your ears, but it's better to compress less than to compress too much and feel the compression pumping, which is a term that we use when you've got too much compression and it's causing the volume to kind of bounce up and down. So a gentle touch 
is generally the way to go. Okay, so that's how I like to set my compressors on my dialogue tracks. I hope you found this useful. You might want to check out my video on Dialogue EQ Explained. It kind of goes hand in hand with this video. As always, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.